non-homogeneous problems look easy, right? We have two methods that work really nice. Well, actually no, I tricked you a bit in the previous two videos. I chose the methods and examples such that the methods work like a charm. So what problems can we encounter? How do we notice them and can we deal with them? That is what you will see in this video where we will discuss a slightly more complicated non-homogeneous problem. So now we do the following one. x prime equals ax, a, a same as uh, before with the same lambdas and uh, eigenvectors and so on, but with a slightly more complicated uh, non-homogeneous part 2 e to the power minus t, 3t. Slightly more complicated, still looks very easy. Uh, so what happens uh, 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 if we uh, uh, try to find a solution? First of all, uh, we can construct a solution using the information from the previous two videos where we solved this problem over here, we found this, this solution, and we solved this problem over here, we found that solution. And now we can just split it up. And uh, the, this part, this non homogeneous part, is, the, uh, is this one plus that one. So that means that the uh, total solution will be the homogeneous part plus the sum of the two particular solutions we found here. So there we go. We already have the total solutions because we can uh, just add the two particular solutions we found earlier. So we know the solution over here. Suppose we don't and try to do it from first principles. What happens if we try to diagonalize? That is the, the aim of this video, to see what kind of problems we can encounter. So there we go. We diagonalize, same trick as always, that y equals p inverse x. You get your y prime equals z times i plus p inverse times g. Compute p inverse times g over here. That's all fine. We get a new uh, vector with, with h1 and h2. So what problem do we need to solve? y prime equals d times y plus our vector h. We decouple. There we go. Uh, we have a, a, a problem for y1 and a problem for y2. And we can use the method of integrating factors. And then we arrive over here. And here I will stop uh, the, the, this procedure by pointing out what the problem is now. Previously, we had this right hand side only the e to the power of 2t and the 1. And the integration was easy. And now we have a slightly more difficult problem. And you see the, uh, the functions we have to integrate already become more complicated. Yes, you can still do these. Uh, that, that was not the point. But you see that if it becomes slightly more complicated, the functions you have to integrate become more complicated. These two are still doable, but this quickly will go out of hand. So that is the problem with the diagonalization procedure. Yes, you can decouple the problem. However, in the end, you will need to integrate. So in the end, there may be some difficult antiderivatives. What if you would use the method of undetermined coefficients instead? That worked really, really fast. So let's see. Uh, let's take a look at our right hand side. We had something with an e to the power minus t. Uh, we had uh, uh, at plus b, just like we saw in the previous example. And then we have to determine the vectors c and the vectors a and b. We compute x prime, gives us an a minus c times e to the power minus t equals a times x particular plus this right hand side. So there we go. Then we compare things. Uh, uh, with uh, e to the power minus t. So with an e to the power minus t, we get a 2, 0 here, an a times c here, and a minus c here. So that's this equation. We can compare things with a t. So we have a 0 here, an a times a here, and a 0, 3 over here. That's this one. And we compare the things without uh, any uh, t dependence. So we get an a over here, and a times b over here. And that's it. So there we have three equations. Now the first two are not a problem. The first two, we did those in the previous video. You can solve for a. And once you have a, you can solve for b. That part is fine. But now let's look at the third equation. It looks okay as well. We can just put the c to the other side and the 2, 0 to the other side. So we get a 
plus a times c plus c or a plus identity matrix times c equals minus 2 0. So it looks okay. Just matrix times unknown vector equals known right hand side. So what's the problem? Well, if we get compute a plus i, we get minus 1 1 1 minus 1. And if you try this with the inverse, you will see that the inverse does not exist. Okay, let's try to do some row reduction. Maybe that works. So we add this once here. And we see that we get a contradiction here. So no solution. So there's a problem here. Method of undetermined coefficients does not work. We do not find a solution. So what is the problem? Why doesn't it work? Well, it was a quite a nasty example here. Because the uh, e to the power minus t over here, the lambda equals minus 1 was already part of the homogeneous solution. So, what is a solution in such a case? You think of what you did in your calculus course. Uh, if your uh, particular solution was already part of your homogeneous solution, you had to add an additional t. So instead, what is the solution in this case? This part is okay, so do it the same. And this particular solution, you cannot choose c times e to the power minus t, but you have to choose uh, a power higher than t. So you have to take c times t plus d times e to the power minus t. So this particular solution will work. So this is one of the problems you can encounter with the method of undetermined coefficients, that your trial solution doesn't work. Maybe you can correct it, maybe not. So this can be one of the problems with the method of undetermined coefficients.